hello. We're live on the Archie Luxury Channel. And today I've got a very, very special guest. Very, very special guest. I've got the world famous, world famous dog trainer, Mark Goldberg. And uh, Mark has been Mark has been a huge fan of my channel for a long time. He's watched a lot of videos. And um, I got to tell you, Mark, I've been a huge fan of your YouTube content. And um, it's, it's really been fantastic to have you on board there. And uh, you've made a lot of funny videos that have made me laugh. I love them. I love them. And... Uh, I um I got to tell you what there I I've um at one stage I offended Mark and uh I very 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 apologized I made the video I love gay men. Do you, <laughs> do you remember that? I do Archie and in fact I have to say you know I, I made that I made that video um you know when you when you broke my heart there for a minute and yeah. the first thing you did was i'll never forget this you called me in the middle of the bloody night and and this is what you <laughs> said you know you said marky 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 what have i done <laughs> <laughs> yes what, what have i done i'll make it better just tell me what i've done yeah so we're, we're good and i love your channel and there is one and there's only one pontiff and i'm I'm glad you like my material, Paul, because I've stolen it all from you. So hey, hey, I love your material. I got to tell you, I see. Unlike some channels who get really funny when people do parodies, I think it's the highest honor that someone could give up their time to make something. You, you, you know what I mean? That's kind of uh, that's just a, it's just a high honor. And uh, I was having a bit of a chat to Mark before this came to to air here. I let him on a secret is that I'm a huge Muzak fan, elevator music, but Muzak never actually licensed their music for elevators. It was always shopping centers. They actually didn't have, it's called elevator music, but it was actually, it's instrumentals. It was popular songs, instrument, it was, it was just session, session band. I mean, how cool is that? It's like your school band you used to play in as a kid who, Play it properly. Do you understand? It's professional music. There's only one place for uh, music, Archie, and that is in the dental chair when they really need to like keep your blood pressure down. And by the time the hour is up, you want to take one of these and you want to like jam it into your own eardrum, piercing your own. You want to hurt yourself. I want to like open my veins after two hours yes. of music. My my favorite song. My favorite mm -hmm. song is a David Cassidy song, Daydreamer, <laughs> music. You know, it's it's funny you should mention David Cassidy because David Cassidy is precisely was precisely my celebrity crush when I was in sixth grade, and that is what told me I had a small problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because everybody else in school thought that that program was about uh, Laurie, his sister Susan Day, was the actress who played yes, Laurie. Yes, 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 yes. And you know, and everybody thought it was about Laurie, and I remember everybody got really excited when she got boobs and. Uh, and I kept thinking, why? why? Why are you excited? That show is not yes. about Lauren. It's about David Cassidy. <laughs> no, I have to tell you, I've, I've always been a huge... I see a lot of similarities with David Cassidy and myself. Yeah. Not that I actually had the sellout crowds or <laughs> audiences there, but I like to see myself as the... I, I was sort of the, the has-been who never was. Quite the coxman were you in uh, I'm the I'm the washed out celebrity who never was actually that famous to start with, see? Now that's Leif Garretson. I think David Cassidy mm. is still touring and I believe he's very popular in Liechtenstein. No, actually David Cassidy, I don't know if you've heard this, he's actually got dementia. Oh, that's sad. And he's also filed for bankruptcy. That's, how would he file for bankruptcy if he's got dementia? I uh, he filed he's... first and yeah. um yeah, he's um, David. David Cassidy was on Doctor Phil. The announcement was done on the Doctor Phil show. Well, this is yeah. this is sad, and we're gonna have to we're, we're gonna have to cut filming now, and I have to go into deep mourning and, and tear my clothes. Well, well, the sad thing is, David Cassidy was on was on a um, a, a f program in America. You know, I think I love you. That song, the song, yeah. I think I love you. Da 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 da. He was. He was humming the words. He couldn't remember the words. You know, why couldn't that have happened to the Hasselhoff instead? Like, you know, 
Do you suppose that we could like somehow, if we could turn back time, if you and I were like Cher and we could turn yes. back time, yes. and we could take David Cassidy's dementia and yes. swap it for another celebrity, who who would we stick that dementia bug inside? Who would we who would we who would we take in his place? Yeah, the half the half would be good. Would I got I gotta be honest. I, I I was a huge fan of uh, of the Brady Bunch too. I I, I liked Mike. Robert Reed, Robert Reed, he was a. Well, he died of AIDS, but uh, yeah, yeah, but he. I thought I liked him. I thought he was a really good actor. I, I like. I he would take you more for like a, a Jan man. I didn't know that you would like Mike. I thought you'd be more a little interested in Jan or maybe no, Marsha. No, no, Marsha, hundred percent, Marsha. It, it took me because I went to a state school. It was only when I was in eleventh grade that I worked out that Marsha was older than my mum. Because <laughs> I could finally work out what the Roman, the Roman numerals. We got a VCR, and I could record the Brady Bunch, and I realized that those those X and Cs, and that it was actually shot in in the early seventies. Well, and I was I born was, in seventy two. Yeah, I was born oh. in fifty eight. I'm a little older than you, and, and oddly, VCR is actually nineteen fifty eight in Roman numerals. That's my birth year. <sighs> weird. Yeah, weird how that now, worked out. I wanted to talk to you about your collecting. I've loved your videos. You've put a lot of passion. I think the whole thing is about being doing the watch videos. It's not just about talking the watches. It's the passion and the enthusiasm. And you've always been very enthusiastic with the watches. Well, that's because you, you infected me early on. You infected me. You infested me. I, I listened to your videos in the shower. I... You are um, you are you are the little voice in my head that says don't buy that shitter, which inevitably I buy anyway. But you are definitely the voice of reason in my head. Well, I I'm the person who invented the term shitter. It didn't wow. really apply to the wristwatch industry until I termed it shitters. I remember, I remember the day that you did that. I remember distinctly. I remember the video in which you said we are going to from now on call this lower mid tier garbage shitters and i thought to myself that's an awful name that will never catch on and in 15 <laughs> minutes we were all using it <laughs> <laughs> shitters i invented some of the vocab and uh all, most of the good vocabulary you did and unfortunately i've had some of my vocabulary has been stolen i invented the term governor in in the wristwatch um space i was the governor's governor the governor yeah. Yeah. and uh that was my when i used to do the archie luxury uh, viewer viewer emails I used to do that British accent that was stolen by another watch channel who called himself self the governor which you know what was, else you invented you you that? invented you invented probably what is the the single most important aspect of any watch video and now pretty much any watch Instagram the wristwatch check the quick wristwatch check. Wristwatch check. The quick wristwatch yes. check. Which has become the customary wristwatch check, the quick wristwatch check, the plain yes. and simple wristwatch check, or as I like to call it, the quick wristwatch check. But that's that's all you. You, you know, yes. you did that. Hey, that's hey, all. Mark, Mark, I gotta tell you, it's one thing to do content, it's gotta have a good audience there. And you've been a uh, a very vocal uh, uh, critic. And uh, and and also, I'd say a, a fan at the same time. And uh, yes, no swearing. The Archie luxury. You were the one who made the video. What's going on with Archie? And uh, yeah, I've had most of my videos demonetized. That's right. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's very tricky. YouTube is not really advising us very well on what's happening, so we have to sort it out on our own. But for the for the viewing audience, you know what happens is we're able to click a few buttons and um, introduce advertising into the video, which is a way of taking back a little money for the vast amount of time that goes mm -hmm. into creating this content. And um, you, you know, Paul, obviously, you have uh, you've you've you're trying to make a full time job of it, and you've managed to do that yes. for quite a while. But that takes an incredible amount of effort that people don't that people don't really appreciate. And the, the problem with it has been is that um, YouTube doesn't really tell us what we can and can't do, and we have to sort that out. So no. I've had some, my my videos have been demonetized, remonetized, and then demonetized again. They just keep playing with me. No, I understand. It's yeah. um, 
look, it's 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 a nasty world there. But you know, the way I look at it is, I've uh, in recent years, Mark, I have gone into a, uh, I've followed the Dave Ramsey approach. I'm reducing credit and debt, mm. and um, if it ends, it ends. You know, I I kind of, it's been a great journey. I've been full time for three years now. And um, if it ends, I'll have to get a job. Mind you, I'm unemployable. I am really unemployable. So, see, what happened to me is many years ago, my stepmom said to me, don't ever use the last name Pluto. Don't mention the last name. As soon as someone says to me, don't do it, I don't know if you noticed this, I started the new advertising campaign with that new intro, Archie Poor Pluto is Archie Luxury branded on every video, and I started the Poor Pluto channel just to, just to. Someone says you can't do it. Ah, that's that's the worst thing they could ever say. I actually was trying to sell what I actually said to my my stepmom was for um for five thousand dollars, I would change my name to something different completely. Okay. You could probably sell that, like naming rights to. Uh, actually, I, I actually wanted ten. I wanted ten thousand. I wanted ten thousand. Change my name completely, like Paul Johnson, Paul Jackson. No, no, no. For, Paul, for ten thousand dollars, you're going to have to tattoo it right on your forehead, and you're going to. And I be said, I said for five thousand dollars, instead of Pluta, P L U T A, I'd make it P L U T E R. Pluter, Paul Pluter. So, you know, you know what I mean. But they didn't take me up, so. I had to go out there and brand every video. And that's also hurt my career too. I've lost jobs because of my videos. Yeah. Well, how many I, have you made? You know, Archie Paul, Archie Paul. You've made thousands of videos. But do you know well, how many? Yeah, there's about eight and a half thousand on Archie Luxury, and there's about twelve hundred on the Paul Pluto channel. You're pushing ten thousand videos at this point. And uh, so there's a lot of yeah. history out there. Yeah, you know? a lot of history. Yeah. But I got to tell you, in all honesty, there, um, it has always been, there's always been the filler. There's a degree of filler. I, I invented that term, filler. And <laughs> yeah, but some of your filler, listen, some of your filler is charming and enchanting, and some of it's very fun and easy to watch. And, and hopefully, what we're doing right now is one of those. Um, but, I, but, you know, man, some of that stuff was just, you know, like I really enjoyed um, the, all the, all the, um, the, the, the vending machines in Japan, the public yes. trans. I love it when you rant and rave and go crazy. I love when you do hidden yeah. iPhone. It's basically, you in a hidden camera, which is yes. hidden. You're, I'm sure you're walking like this through a mall. Yes. <laughs> Actually, did, did you like that joke? I woke up early. No one was on the streets. I said, I'm here in Fukushima. I can't see anyone. Where are you gone? <laughs> yeah. well, I, that was a great series of videos. And quite frankly, yes. I don't, I, I'm not in the least bit sure you will ever top ever ever and you know and, and i'm a guy who's been to uh to thailand numerous times so yes. all these places where where you have been and you shot video I, you know i have been to all these places in, in bangers but um when uh when <laughs> i give you breakfast <laughs> <laughs> oh nana kim nana kim you'll never actually okay that was that is second best because literally the best one ever, and possibly the best video ever made on YouTube. Why it doesn't have five million views, I'm not sure. Was when you when you when you tipped a street vendor with a shampoo with a hotel shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's possibly the best video ever made, in my opinion. I mean, yes. You, no, that that Nana Kim, that was fantastic. When she was doing an interview with me, and I said, "Look, I'll give you a couple hundred baht for your time," and she said, "No, no, not enough." That was gold. You look that so was... hurt. I give you, I give you <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> and you know, the funny, the funny thing about that that I think most mm. Uh, mm. Aussies and Americans, and North Americans, aren't going to understand, but that you and I do, mm. and that is when you go to Asia, they they mm. speak a very simple form of English, mm. and that they only use present tense. They omit half of the prepositions. Mm -hmm. so Yes, we end up speaking in a way that they can understand. We're not mocking yes. them. We are not. No, being raised. no, that's right. That's right. Yeah, we're simply speaking in a way that that we know they will be able to understand. So when we say, "I give you breakfast," if you if you said it in a more complicated fashion, she wouldn't have understood you. But that, that no, was, no, that's exactly it. Exactly. And I, I tell you honestly, I did give her the thousand baht. 
because that was YouTube gold. I could see it was gold, but I just kept the camera rolling. And uh, when I, I took her down, I escorted her down, yeah. and I, I gave her the thousand baht. I said, "Here you yeah. go," because well, I knew I that was a great video. That was that was worth. I would have paid five thousand baht for that video. It was so cool, you know. It was terrific. And, and what we should we should do the exchange for everybody. A thousand baht is approximately twenty nine U.S. dollars. I don't know what that is in Aussie. Yeah. So it, and the three hundred baht that you promised her was like ten bucks. Not not yeah, ten bucks. Ten bucks. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> it there. But you know, as you know, you can go out onto the street and enjoy a, a you know a pretty decent meal. Um, from a street cart and have something that's freshly made right in front of you for maybe two or three dollars. So yeah, unfortunately, they are closing down though. They they're trying to ban those sort of street carts there, and uh, yeah, you know, Thailand of old is changing. They've got speed cameras now. Yeah, and well, uh, the other that's thing not a is, bad thing, man, they're crazy. They drive driving over there is horrifying. And uh, Pattaya Pattaya still has mm. tons of street. Like, like you know, I had that near death experience too on the airplane. Yes, yeah. And I uh, you made a you made a complaining you made a rant video. You are at your finest when you're angry. And uh, <laughs> yes, fact, I nearly you, died. I nearly died. You know, didn't didn't you go rant at um at an Apple store once, if I recall correctly? Yes, that yes, yes. Apple's the enemy. You know, it's. <laughs> you uh, know, so we love their products. We can't help it. Yes. Hey, so tell me this. Tell me this. With your collection there, you've uh, how many watches have you got now? Well, you know, um, decent, decent, non shitters, non shitters. Okay, so that's a really funny question, and the answer is um, I'm going to give you a very legitimate and honest answer right now. Yep. I don't know. What's the decent stuff? What's the decent okay, stuff? Start, listen, I'm going to start listing them for you. Would you mind making tick marks on a page or something? Okay, or I'll do it. Okay, okay, just because, okay. like, literally, you know, see if I can remember everything. Yeah. yeah I don't know. But, hey, go but can we can can we first do a quick wristwatch check? Quick, 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 quick wristwatch check. Reggae yeah. type oh, twenty. That, that's a beautiful watch, and uh, I, I'm wearing a shitter. <laughs> it's a ball. Micro, it, it, what is it? It's a ball. I don't know. It's a hydrocarbon. Yeah, it's a it's got tritium, sure. it's got tritium tubes and a seventy-seven fifty in there. But okay, I know the seventy-seven fifty is not such a big deal. But this guy is good to six hundred meters. And check this out: you can unscrew and push the pushers underwater. Wow, that's pretty good. Because they have gaskets. So I mean, wow, that's fantastic. But that it's not in the good watch collection. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go through mm -hmm. the good stuff. Okay, the good stuff. So I have a – this is the pre-ceramic Rolex stuff. Okay. I have a, I have a pre-ceramic no-date, uh, the 1640M, right? Uh, 14060M, oh, that's what it would be. Yeah. So yeah. I have that one. And, uh, yeah. and by the way, all the pre-ceramic stuff I bought on the advice of uh, one crazy Australian bastard, uh, one Archie Luxury. So, <laughs> so you are to blame for all that. No worries. I have that. I have a one six 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 zero, which is a pre ceramic sea dweller. Yes. Okay, got that. I have a one six six one three. It's a two toe two bluesy. Toe bluesy. Wow. I'm afraid to curse because I don't want to mess up your. No you know, worries. But the, you know, I can't say two tone bluesy without thinking effers. You yes. Know? Yes. So yes. I, I have that. Um, what else do I have? I think that oh, I have. I don't know. I don't remember the reference number, but I have an old two tone date just. Um, ah, do you believe? Listen, I would have bought it. Maybe you can figure the reference number for me. I would have bought it. Sapphire. It's plastic. It'd be a sixteen oh one three. Sixteen oh one three. I would have bought it in about nineteen eighty seven. Or yeah, 16013, two tone. Okay, yeah. Great watch, great watch, great watch. Yeah, well, the only thing, you know, it's a, what is this? Is that a 36 millimeter? 36. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's a 36 millimeter with the plastic crystal. And um, cool. The auto. I had a, you know what? I had um, I had Kenny New Yen at Jewelers yes. on time. Um, and I'm still keeping my $3,000 because uh, yes. 
That watch, when I bought that watch, I, I love that watch. I never wear it. It's a little safe queen now, but mm -hmm. boy, I uh, I bought that new at the at the dealer. It's like the only one I ever did that with, mm -hmm. and um, I wore it every day for ten years. It went to the beach. It went in the. That's the date just. This is the date yeah. just. Yeah, I dug in plants with that thing. I emptied mm -hmm. garbage. I dug ditches. I mean, it did a lot of manual labor. Yeah, it shouldn't have been worn then, but that's okay. It was, and it survived all of that. And then yeah. one day, about fifteen years in, it quit working. So it sat in a drawer for another ten years. Yes. And, uh, then I sent it over to Kenny and he restored it and it's, it looks yes. new. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. But so I have that. Um, so what is that? Now we're up to four. That's four Rolexes, right? Yes. Okay. And um, I have, I bought a, um, a ceramic GMT black on black on black. Yes, yes, yes. And I really liked it. And I had that for like a good long while. And then somebody came along. See, I have a problem. Real quick, my problem is I'm really good at buying things at, at a decent price. Like I'll, I can yes. source good trust. You know, I'm good. I'm good at buying. I'm, I I suck at selling. <laughs> you know, so I see. Like I have a bunch of stuff I want to sell, and I don't know how to sell it. So here it sits because I bought the black on black on black, and then someone came along with a fabulous deal on a Batman, and so I bought that Batman. I mean, Archie, do you want to know what I paid for my Batman? Yes. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Six months old. Yes. Under warranty. It's it's still in its yeah. first year of life. And I paid seventy six hundred US for it. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Seven thousand six hundred. So what did you do with the black, black, black then? Well, I bloody kept it because I told you I'm horrible about selling things. Uh, I, okay. I need to sell it, but it's a good but watch, but it's a good watch. It is, but why do I need two GMTs with just different colors? Like I don't. Yeah, I understand. It's like ridiculous to keep it, but I, I, I have a I have a box in the bank and mm -hmm. uh, like you know. And and I have that box for two reasons. One is home security, but yes. you know, the other one is I I've changed watches today like maybe three or four times already. And I see. if I keep if I keep them all in the house at once, I'll be like I'll be like a rabbit. I'll be like a gerbil running in a in a in a on a wheel, you know. Yes. And like, I have a I have a problem. I have a mental disorder with watches. Mm, I see. I lost track. How many are we up to? Uh, keep you, going. Just keep going. We don't need to count them. All right. And then I have a James Cameron. Yes. Um, you had a Daytona, but you got rid of it. It wasn't. I hated it. Yeah. Yeah. Hated it. I bought the Daytona. Actually, I want to blame you for that because uh, you did some videos on the Daytona, and I and 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 I and, and, and I really thought. Here's what I learned from my experience with the Daytona. I, I made a, a video on it called "I Hate My I Hated My Daytona," so people can go back and you know find that video. Yeah, um, it's a gorgeous watch, but um, you should. Here's what I learned: you should never buy what you think you're supposed to like. You should buy what you love, not what you think mm -hmm. you should love. Yes, it's like an arranged marriage. You know, like maybe you'll fall in love later after the kids are born. Well, yes. you, know, you know, that didn't work for me. Yes. And so I didn't love her, and uh, I cheated on her, and then I sent her away. Sure. But um, sure. when so you were just stupid enough to admit that, you know, uh, I, here's what I know: I, I, I'm very passionate about watches. I'm super opinionated, yeah. but you know, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing, and that's me. I'm, I'm a danger to myself and others. So. Actually, I, I understand exactly. I, I had my 1016 Explorer 1. I bought it in 1990, brand new from a dealer. That's the only watch I bought new. Actually, mm. only decent watch I bought new, I should say. I bought some other shitters. And it's because I knew it was so valuable, I had to sell it and get a president. I mean, if I hadn't have known it was valuable, I'd still have the bloody thing, you know? And, and then probably you regret it, you know? Well, you do. You think, oh, geez, that was a cool watch. And money clouded the, the little knowledge is very dangerous you're right you're right you're 100 percent right there you can hurt yourself you know and, and you I have any paddocks paddocks any paddocks you know uh, i don't i don't deserve a paddock i, I don't deserve a patek philippe i don't deserve one and and not only that but i'm gonna say honestly um i'm very hard on my belongings um my these all those rolexes and, and and some other watches that I, i'll tell you i have one or two other good hey, can i, I tell you can i tell you a game i like to play yeah okay so what yeah, i do is I, I i put on a i put on my world time for sale on gum 
Shrewsbury, sort of like our Aussie Craigslist. Uh -huh. And you always have low ballers, right? Yeah. And, and I, I had this guy rang me and I said, look, 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 I, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, because he was low balling us. I, I thought I was going to have some fun with this guy. I said, so I said, look, I'm very sorry, but I don't think, I don't think we could get, we, we could get approval from Paddock to sell it to you. You just don't seem to have, you don't seem to be classy. <laughs> So, and he, he didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to say. I said to him, I said, look, did you go to a private school? Did you um, tell me about your parents? Don't worry about the price. Tell me about your father. What did he do for his career? Did he, did, did he serve in the military? Who's your father and what did he do? <laughs> exactly. I said that to him. And, and he goes, what, 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 what? I said, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to see whether you're worthy of this piece. Don't worry about the price. The price is secondary. I said, this is a paddock filling. We've got to get approval to sell it to you. That's that's hysterical. And in the meantime, was he was like a miner in Alice Springs, right? Like <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't like. Yeah, I just haven't. I'm just taking the piss out of him. And uh, I, I, uh, yeah. So that that's exactly it. The paddocks themselves, they're so pretentious. See, uh, see. I don't know if you know this, Mark. The whole Archie luxury joke is. The whole joke is. This is the joke. Not many people get this. The whole joke is, is that these watch companies, these Swiss watch companies have always said you could buy this product and you can be classy. That's what advertising yeah. is. You know, yeah. if you want to be cool, you buy a, you know, you buy a Merc or a Rolls Royce, or if you want to be cool, you buy the Lamborghini. You buy a product, well, it's, this is America, consumer, consumerism. You buy a this product. Is our gift, so, our gift to the world. Our yeah, gift to the world. A, so, so I've always so if you want to be classy and sophisticated and worldly, you buy a certain watch. Like I used to be a huge fan. I don't know if you remember the the Peter Stuyvesant smoking commercials. I was twenty before I realized there's no such thing as an international passport. I thought you needed because <laughs> Peter Stuyvesant was your international frozen. passport to smoking. It was just you know it was just it was just so. Bullshitty, and and so I always the joke is that you can be Archie Luxury's tried to have a lot of knowledge, but he's as crass and as nasty as the rest of us. Yeah, I think it's working. That's the joke. That's the joke. Do, do, do you, like after you buy a Patek, does like your nose hair fall out? Do you immediately know how to tie a Windsor knot? Like you know, just <laughs> what, 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 <laughs> like do, do you get more sex? And are you allowed to remove the? Uh, are you allowed to remove the barrier protection? I mean, like what? Well, tell me what happens when you get your first Patek. Well, okay. If we've got to look at this is very secretive. We've got to look at the uh, the Patek commercials to give us the insight. Okay. So the the thing is this, right? You suddenly get a fondness for wooden boats. Those mm -hmm. you know those wooden speed boats like the Chris, Chris Craft. Craft. Chris Craft yeah. And um, there's a few brands. The Italian brands were even more exclusive, but Chris Craft was the sort of that's what you Americans would understand, those wooden hull boats. Yeah. You have an appreciation for uh, 1960s Mercedes Benzes, convertible Mercedes Benzes. You have a um, you have a five million dollar house, okay. Do you, you begin have, to use like? Do you begin to use like land skim condoms or uh, you know like you know what happens? Well, well, actually, to tell you the truth is is that once you get the Patek, the whole <laughs> desire for sex just goes. Does it? Yeah. Do you just like lay in bed and and do you like lay in bed and 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 stroke the movement or? Uh... <laughs> it's just look. I tell you honestly, it's an old man's watch. It really is an old man's watch. It's not a. It's not a young man's watch. They are an old man's watch, and um, you know it's 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 they're very very. It's reasons. It's it's you never own the Patek. You merely look after it for the next generation. It's all about that hidden hidden meaning. The other reason you should never sell things is because you realize how much you've lost when you resell your goods. Yeah. It's it's not a good look to have to resell your goods. Is not a good look. But uh, I got to tell you, in all honesty, the Patek itself there, once you have a Patek, Philippe, um, you know, you can take the Patek off the man, but the, you can never take the Patek out of the man, you know? So the, the stench of success, like, remains even exactly. after you have to pay the mortgage? Is that exactly. what you're Exactly. Well, I, you know. let, me, let me ask you a question. 
Now, actually, let me just say one story quickly. I remember many years ago, actually, not so long ago, I had a white gold protect. You know, my white gold world time. Yeah, I remember. So I had papers. I Googled who, who the hell it belonged to because I had his name on the papers. Yeah. And he's in jail for fraud. I've done that too. I found the guy who owned my, uh, I found the guy who owned my Daytona originally. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And what Same happened to him? Uh, he was a, a highly successful financier. Yes. On, uh, on an island off the coast of San Francisco, a little spit of land. Yep. Yep. A little property off of San Francisco. I called him. We had a nice chat because I wanted to find out if he wanted to buy it back. And he was, he was thrilled with the idea of buying it back. In the end, he didn't. But we had a really nice chat. This guy just made, you know, like millions of dollars in, uh, in tech stocks. But he sold them all at the right time when most people took the, you know, took the. Yes. Put the plunge yes. on that worse, worse than that plane ride that you had. Uh, yes, you know, yes, yes. That's have, exactly it. it there. No, but look, I got to tell you, in all honesty, then then my the current yellow gold protect there, that belongs to someone in Canada who's got a house in Vancouver, according to Google Google Maps, is worth three point seven million dollars. Well, you know the moral of the story is clearly if you buy white gold, you're a bastard who's you know going to jail for fraud. Like um, exactly. What was that guy, Bernie Madoff? Like Bernie you know, Madoff, yes. Bernie Madoff had white gold, and um, you know, uh, oh, Trump probably wearing yellow gold, right? Bernie Madoff also had quite a few redials, if the truth be told. Well, that's uh, that's you, you know what they were probably all Chinese. <laughs> you know, everything he had was fake. But see, I, I I still have this question in my mind about about Patek. Rolex is a very robust, very hard to beat up watch. I, yes. I have everything. Yes. Um, one day I want to ask you about whether I should buy the gold sky dweller or the steel one, but I, you know what? I'm a dog trainer. So there's times when I'm picking up poo, I'm bathing a dog who's shat itself and I've got to clean it up and I've got it in the bathtub. And sometimes I realize I still have, you know, my sports steel Rolex on my wrist with a oyster bracelet. And you know, that stuff could go down. Most of those watches can go down to a hundred meters in poo and you're just completely fine. But do you ever imagine bathing a diarrhea dog wearing a Patek? Like, does that make any sense in any world ever? I got to tell you, they are very delicate. They are delicate. They are delicate. Doesn't matter. You know, the steel on the Patex is nowhere like Rolex steel. I actually get a lot of fun. I got to tell you that one of the reasons I got rid of the gold sub was I never really enjoyed wearing. I, I mean, I loved it. It was nice to impress people. But for me, I never felt comfortable with it because the gold is soft. It's like it's made of chocolate. Yeah. It's so easy to scratch. And I actually love steel. You look at my watches lately. I've got the Reverso. I've got the Explorer 2. I've got the Speedmaster Man on the Moon. I've got the IWC Ingenua, and I've got the Breguet. They're all steel stunners because steel, steel just does things that you wouldn't want to do with gold. So I, I actually really love steel. I got the World Time in yellow gold. That's my one piece. But I got to tell you, honestly, you know, you've got to be able to use these things. There's no point putting them in the safe. You know, you've got to. Oh, got to are, you wearing, are you wearing that world time? Ah, uh, look, I uh, I wear it occasionally. It's actually in the bank safe at the moment, so it, yeah. it, that's where that's where it is. It's so much money. You know, I don't like to leave it at. I don't want to leave things at home that are valuable like that. I kind of. It's kind of. Yes, it's good to have, but it's also you worry. You don't want to leave it at home, and it's just a hassle. But I, I do wear it. Yeah, I do wear it. I, I do love that watch, but I got to tell you, I took it to Singapore, and I was sweating like a pig. I thought, oh, take it yeah. off, take it off. You know, you don't really enjoy it. They are delicate. They're delicate. Gold is delicate, and um, I got a lot of respect for steel. I got a lot of respect for steel, and uh, I think I agree with you. That, that Sky Dweller, the white, the steel with the white gold bezel could be perfect for you. That's a lot cheaper. That's the one that I like the best. I mean, almost everything I almost everything I have is steel, couple two tones. Mm -hmm. I also have a Jega La Cultura Master Compressor Diver GMT watch. That's you know, so I do have a JLC anyway. But um, I just can't see fit to buy anything that's real delicate, you know. And yes. um, on my last trip to uh, to Thailand, which was just in January. Um, no, excuse me. It was in July. I was in I was in uh, Thailand for most of July, and I wore I took the James Cameron with me as well as a, a Breitling Super Ocean for a shitter. Ah, that's okay. Now, look, Mark. I am very sorry. I'm going to have to cut this interview now. 
I got to take one of my kids to a piano lesson, well, piano exam. But so let's do another live show. I just wanted to test this. We, we kind of left it a bit late here. Um, I'll be back in a couple of hours, but that's probably too late for you. Yeah, we'll come at we'll come we'll come at it another day. But uh, I've got questions for you. I'd like to interview you on your own channel. Yes, yes, let's do that, Mark. I would love to do that. So look, I we've, this has been a really fun interview. Let's can we do it tomorrow? Yeah, let's uh, we'll hook, let's we'll, do it we'll, tomorrow. We'll, let's do it tomorrow. Well, this was a great intro one to tech test test the technology, see if it works. It's very easy. Let's do it tomorrow, similar time. I'd love to. I'd, please, you ask away. Okay, this will be fantastic. So I'm going to cut the interview now. It's been a pleasure.